Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It is your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly, email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we are discussing the latest generation of a long-running Chagera LeCoult complication. This is the Master Geographic, part of the Master Control model line. We first saw the Geographic complication in 1989, and over the years, it found its way into the Master Control series. Well, this one, the latest, was released in 2020, but here's the crux of the issue. This watch is already discontinued, making it the rarest generation of Master Control. It's 40 millimeters in diameter in stainless steel, 11 millimeters thick, and 47.5 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip, with a 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs. On my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, you can see the watch wears well. The lugs come nowhere near the edge of my wrist, and you can see that best in this down the barrel shot. From over the top, it's evident too, though only side after side. I can't show you both at the same time, but you can see I have quite a bit of clearance, especially if I don't pull the strap tight. You can also appreciate that it's fairly thin. Uh, the profile, as well as the case design, draws heavily from some of the design language established in the early to mid 2010s with the Master Ultra Thin series, so it's considerably more elegant than the Master Control watches of the 2000s. And I would recommend this watch for a wrist as small as 14 centimeters in circumference. The strap is high grade, relatively simple, light brown calfskin leather with a monotone stitch. You can see that it has sheer cut sides showing the layers of leather, which are substantial. On the bottom, it's less ornately dyed calfskin. You can see it's a JLC factory strap in brand new condition. There are pull tab spring bars so you can quickly remove the strap from the case without tools. And there's also a little push button release inside the clasp so you can remove the strap from the clasp without tools. Taking a quick look at the spring bars here, you can see that the lugs are drilled relatively close to the case, but there's no impediment to the motion of the strap because JLC specs curved spring bars. The deployant clasp is Chagera LeCoult's latest. You can see it's a double folded clasp with a JLC logo externally, and then that little push button in there for release. Folding clasps are useful because they make it harder to drop your watch while donning or removing them. Rolling over the case, this is where it borrows some of the design language from the Master Ultra Thins. The lugs are much less severe and blockish than they were back in the 2010s when JLC perhaps spread one case design over too many different models, sports watches and dress watches alike. Here the lugs are integrated into the case band and they come to a nice tapered point. There's an expanding bevel along their shoulders, and they're polished on their hoods while satination dominates the sides. We have a little crown for adjusting the geographic feature. We have another crown for setting the time and winding the watch. Then we have a pusher adjuster for the pointer style date over at approximately, let's call that two, we'll call that 210. Now the watch has a polished facet between each set of lugs, and then a conical bezel that has a short vertical segment set in from the case band, and then a conical profile, and this helps to thin out the apparent size of the watch. Uh, taking a quick look at the watch, you can see that it's very similar to the original Geographic in layout. When we get to the dial side, we have a reference city down at six o'clock, which is mechanically linked to a second time zone just above, which is equipped with an AM, PM, day-night indicator adjacent at nine o'clock. And then over that, we have a power reserve indicator and we have a pointer style date. This is very consistent. You'll see this right back to the 1989 Master Control. You'll also see it in some Audemars Piguet and Vacheron Constantin watches that use this same base movement. You can see there's a flange outboard as the dial is kicked up at its edge. And then we have plenty of luminescence for a dress watch. Really, it's a sporty dress watch, but you can see that the watch has three luminescent indices at the quarters, plus luminescent hour and minute hands. The watch also includes applied and rhodium plated faceted dart style steel hour indices plus your steel rhodium plated tri-arabic numerals. The dial base is what's known as opaline, which means it has a frosted finish within the individual registers, and then if we get outside the registers, there's a slight sunburst. So it's opaline on top of a sunburst, 
and it's sort of a hybrid finish. As you can see, we have slightly countersunk subregisters, and then we have little varnished, blue varnished alpha style hands for the subregisters. The hands for hours and minutes are Dauphine style, fluted down their center in high polish, and we have a fired blue counterweighted Lancet style seconds hand. We do have a hacking function. Let's take a quick look at the geographic feature and see how this works. So it's a hybrid of a world time and a dual time. You set your reference city. Right now I'm in Dhaka, but let's say I want to travel and visit my friends at Watchbox Dubai. Notice how the time on that secondary display is changing, and you can change it in either direction. And as you do, the little AM PM indicator will let you know, for example, whether it's six in the morning on the cusp of dawn, which is where we are now, or six in the evening. Now these little extensions next to the city names represent cities that use alternate summer and winter time. So that reminds you to use a one hour offset appropriate to the time of year when referencing those cities. Now this is not your current city. Uh, this is your reference city. It represents the time on this little sub register. So that's your secondary time. Your local time goes at center and it drives the date. That's how that works. Now if I want to set the secondary time zone, independently without moving the reference city or moving the local time. I can do so with an intermediate crown setting position. When I pull the crown out, I activate hacking or stop seconds, and now everything moves in sync. The power reserve indicator traditionally indicated 38 to 40 hours of power reserve, but the latest version of JLC Caliber 939 has a 70 hour power reserve. The movement is a unidirectional winder with ceramic bearings, which maximizes winding efficiency, those two features. It beats way at eight beats per second, and it is free sprung, which gives it both potentially greater accuracy of adjustment as this regulation system allows for very fine changes, and then also greater resistance to shock-induced timing deviation. The 70-hour power reserve is a relatively recent innovation that JLC started rolling out on its automatic movements in 2018. So 70 hours here, almost three days. You've got the stop seconds, the secondary time zone. You have the adjustment via the geographic feature. You have the AM PM indicator for the reference time zone. All of this pivots on 34 joules. It's water resistant down to 50 meters, which is impressive for a dress watch. And it goes through the master 1000 hours control, which is a 1000 hour test of the fully assembled watch for chronometry, winding efficiency, power reserve, durability, and water resistance. Inaugurated in 1992, the Master 1000 Hours Control is a six position test of the fully assembled watch, not five positions as with the COSC. That's only five positions and the movement. This is six positions and fully constructed, plus this is 1000 hours, whereas the COSC is only about two weeks. Also, you can see the movement's nicely done. Although most of the finishing is mechanical, there is some hand finishing here, and the screws are the real deal, being kiln-fired blued screws in steel. Very beautiful and very traditional. Reach out to Team Osso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.